Pulse Tube Refrigerator. The basic idea of this thermodynamic machine is to create a temperature difference between two reservoirs by shifting heat from the lower temperature reservoir to the higher one. Therefore, mechanical work is needed. It is very easy to imagine that the gas fluid, e.g. air, increases temperature when it gets compressed. The opposite is happening when it is expanding. So the basic principle of this machine is to let these two conditions occur at different places within the system by relocating the major gas volume between both reservoirs, depending on compression or expansion state. The idea was actually to use available parts from our workshop and as it is all about compressing and expanding gas, we decided to use pre-manufactured pneumatic components for realizing that. Compressor. For compressing the air, we were using a pneumatic cylinder, which is here the one on the left side. It is used to press always the same air through the regenerator into the pulse tube. The other cylinder is for driving that. This design was chosen to vary the stoke and compression level in a simple way. Even it is probably not suitable for a high operation frequency. Regenerator. For the housing of the regenerator, a square steel pipe was used into which the fittings for the connection of the pneumatic pipes were welded. As heat storing material, we used two different kinds of steel wool. To monitor the pressure increase, a pressure gouge was installed. This was also helpful for leakage tests, especially the removable side cover was not so easy to seal properly. Adjustable buffer. Because it was not so sure how big the required buffer size needs to be, we decided to use the chamber of another pneumatic cylinder to be able to easily vary its volume. There was actually later also the idea to allow a certain movement to achieve the needed phase shift for the gas relocation. This style would then be more like an alpha type Stirling cooler. Control. To control the oscillation of the driving pneumatic cylinder, there was actually only an alternating signal needed. Therefore, a Siemens logo was used over which the solenoid valve was controlled with a frequency of 1 to 2 Hz. Unfortunately, a cooling effect could not really be measured. It was also obvious that the air inside the closed system was escaping slowly. Probably with that kind of equipment and the high frequency of alternating pressure change, it is difficult to realize a pulse tube cooler that way. Thanks for watching.